the other thing that happened when I was working on Batman and Robin was our shop at the same time got to build all the miniatures for Alien Resurrection, the fourth Alien movie. And that was really great too because again, you know, growing up watching Alien movies, I remember sneaking in to watch Alien as a kid and then Alien's Cameron film came out. So to, we got a privilege to work on the fourth one and it was directed by Jean-Pierre Genet and uh, Darius Kanji was the DP and uh, incredible DP and I really love his f photographic style. He uses what's called the E&R process, which is a process where he sort of washes out the silver and so it gets this incredible sort of halation around his highlights and his darks get really dark and, and crunchy and black. But Darius, knowing his craft, always puts enough light in there to sort of, you can still look into his shadows and still see detail and still see depth. His style is just really beautiful. Well, we're making this movie and he's shooting the live action that way and we have to shoot the visual effects the same way. And in a way, that was kind of a very funny thing to do because the ENR process is a chemical process. It, it, it changes from day to day in terms of how your dailies come out. So when we would shoot the miniatures, they would also process our film with the ENR process. And so the models would sometimes look different ways on different days. And that can become an issue when you're shooting, you know, mats. You want a consistency in your blue screen photography. You want consistency in the exposures for your subject, but it would be variable, you know, from day to day because of the uh, e &R process. So it was, it was a little prob problematic and in, in, it uh, meant that we had to reshoot some, some scenes. But the one thing that happened on that movie, and uh, it's incredible, I, I can live to tell the story. We built these models and we're shooting them and they wanted this very zero light space depth look, whatever that was. So they spent a lot of time wedging the uh, look of the models for the space scenes. Uh, what was the lighting supposed to look like? They didn't want any direct light on them because they didn't think, well, if we're out in space, we're not gonna get a direct light. It has to look like it's all reflective light from starlight. So they have to find some way to get these model ships to expose, but without any direct lighting on them. There's been various, you know, theories on how to do that, but for some reason, and by the way, we're wedging these. And when you wedge a shot, that means you, you know, you're, you're um, doing exposure test. Wedging usually takes a couple of hours, maybe a day. We were wedging that show for weeks. They got to the point where they said, you gotta start shooting real shots. And so they actually took the DP and the DP went off and started shooting a shot, but he wasn't done wedging. So he actually had a second DP come in and continue wedging these models. Insane, insanity. Eventually got to a point where they decided to come up with a, a look. And the look was to bounce light off of black wrap. Now black wrap is a, you know, what we use to wrap lights to make them non-reflective and, and cover things in shots that don't, we don't want to see. Black wrap is not very reflective at all. And in order to get enough exposure off the black wrap, we were taking 20K lights, hitting the black wrap, and then using that bounce to light the models. We essentially were building these giant ovens of black wrap and 20Ks around the miniatures to get enough exposure. Well, the problem is, is that um, when you're shooting miniatures with motion control cameras, you're stopped down quite a bit. So your, your camera exposure is really small, F22, F32, whatever we were shooting at, which means that we needed long exposures per frame. So um, an eight second shot on film might have taken us eight hours to shoot based on the number of uh, length of exposures. Well, now we're, these models are now being exposed for eight hours in intense heat in these closed environments. And on top of it, uh, the DP didn't want any specular reflections off the models themselves. So the models start out with these incredibly beautiful paint jobs that uh, Nigel Phelps, the production designer, had come up with these like really bright, vibrant, heavy metal-esque from the, from the comic, you know, Mobius, Chris Foss, high designed color schemes. And the Betty actually was bright yellow with these tiger stripes and very, very effective looking. You'd never seen anything like it because you really hadn't seen anything like that on film. But by the time we got there and we started finding all these specular reflections, we had to start killing the reflections with uh, using mortar tint, which is a very flat, dead medium. It's like um, pastels. So we're applying mortar tint over the model. And eventually the whole thing got grunged up with mortar tint. It actually looked pretty cool, but it sort of obscured all this um, paint work we'd done. But the models were uh, being subjected to high heat and literally were melting and bubbling on stage. They were starting to warp and crack and the plastic resin was starting to come apart. So partway through the photography, we had to bring in air conditioning units, run rubber hoses from the air conditioning units 
and push them up inside the models to keep the models cool enough to photograph them. <laughs> So a uh, very sort of intense, insane shooting scheme for uh, Alien Resurrection, but, um, uh, but the shots look great. You know? <laughs>